I would like to introduce to that live streaming, Vineet. Welcome to the show. Hey, hey, Yoda. Hello, everyone. Very nice to be here. Hi, Vineet. Uh, I think we've been working on this <laughs> live streaming for so long, and we made a promise that this podcast can be virtual as well. So thank you so much for accepting the invite and being the first guest for the virtual face the finance for non-finance uh, podcast. So welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Reda. And I'm glad that you were able to make it with, you know, the kind of uh, rush going on out there in the road. Exactly. exactly. Traffic is also <laughs> these days. So now if you can just start, we have our philosophy for finance for non-finance that titles extremely important, of course. But at the same time, we come to that podcast to share our own experience. So away from the titles, we use the approach to introduce the guest through his or her purpose in life. If you can share some lines, what is your purpose in life, Vinny? Yeah, that's a very, you know, targeted question, Rera. I would say that, you know, over the period when you have a journey in where the professional or the personal, your purpose keep on, you know, developing also. But I would say the one purpose always has remained the same, that I won't have some kind of good institutions or channel where I can disseminate the knowledge. So the institute could be, institution could be like a school, like a college, and this will really require very big investments. But in case I'm not able to do it, I will land up with some kind of building some library. The goal is that, Reda, you know, I want something which is over my life, you know, which goes beyond my my life and people can gain knowledge and make a wise decisions in their life. So this is something which always remains my main purpose, but otherwise, you know, sometimes the purpose becomes like a build a better product or better services so that it can benefit it to the world. But eventually, you know, the the purpose which always remains the same is this one. Yeah, but that's that's a big mission, Vinita, if I may say. And life has its own up and down situation and how you cope with your purpose. How, how you stay aligned to your purpose on a daily basis, giving all the hits that we have on a daily basis? Yeah, I mean, as I said, you know, the trends are say, changing so fast all around. The first thing, you know, I have always noticed that in order to align with the purpose, you have to be very agile. Mm. You know, the things are changing the, in terms of technologies, in terms of the ways of doing. So you always should be very agile and a focus on your big, bigger goals in life. Mm. And once you see that the you know the bigger goals are same, but the path could be different. It could be the smaller, easier path. Sometimes it is a difficult path. But if you are agile and ready to adapt with the new things or new technologies or new ways of working, your purpose will be aligned always. OK. So agility is the key on how to navigate your purpose and make sure that you're still aligned to your, to your purpose. Now, giving our subject today, um, you can see the, the journey of digital transformation and technology and finance. I would love to call it how they dance together. I, I look at it as a dance between finance and technology. Uh, giving your expertise that you're coming from a, an entity or part of your experience that you are responsible for transforming other big giant entities as well at the same time. Correct. So there is a there is a say we say that the carpenter door needs to be fixed in a way or another. And if you're if you're responsible for the for the old finance operation and one of the entities that are responsible for transforming other entities, then you need to be the benchmark as a finance function within your territory, right? So if you can share some lights. Um, before we go deeper into the discussion of the technology, uh, yeah. does the printer door is, need to be fixed or it is already super good door, if I may say? No, I mean, see, there are different ways of looking at it, right? So I'm involved, you know, do bigger transformations and help my customers, clients on, you know, making the things happen. You can call it the carpenter door also. But, you know, it all starts with right, the enthusiasm to make the processes better. So with the enthusiasm, it comes like, you know, how you can improve your current processes and how can you take to the next level, mm. right? But the question comes in, you know, what is the next level, right? Mm. 
So that way, you know, you compare yourself within the same industry to the other companies that how they are doing it. Whether I am having a hundred employees doing a billion dollar of business in finance, what the other companies are doing it. So there are many ways to do it, you know, the comparisons, but this is could be the starting point where you compare yourself with other bigger best in class or the, you know, where you want to aspire to. And that gives you an idea what carpenter door you have to fix <laughs> and where to start with. <laughs> right, quite agree. Valid point uh, in that sense. Now, it, the finance function has been evolving like, like never before as we speak now. Uh, you know, technology is impacting all functions, of course, no doubt on that. But it seems there was a, th there is a dry area in finance where technology is hammering massively, if I may say, in the finance platform. Um, if you start the question, how you see finance as a function evolving or dancing with the evolvement of the technology as a landscape as we speak now? Yeah, I mean, um, if you look at the you know, past two decades, you know, when I started my journey close to end of 90s, so, you know, one of the things which we used to do is uh, article ship in our CA chartered accountancy exams, which is a rigorous three years of training, right? So when I started the journey, there was some very small softwares were there, but mostly the things were done manually, means book writing, you know, mm -hmm. the debits and credits, right? And entire timings of, and the goal of the person of the accountant out there at that time was to make sure the accounts are correct. Means the bigger thing which revolves in the finance is a trial balance, right? So when you do handwriting books, you know, from the debits and the credits. And the end of the day, you find like, okay, you know, your trial balance is not matching. <laughs> and you keep on digging and finding out what is the double, you know, entry on the debit side, entry on the credit side. So that has all gone now, you know. There is no, with advance of technologies, all the debits, and I, I'm not sure, you know, now the finance is even looking into those kind of, you know, transactions level of, uh, matching concepts. So basically the corrections and all has gone because it's all automated. The double entry system is being taken care by the systems. So now the finance is focusing more on analyzing the things. Hmm. And we all starting analyzing and then the technology again, keep on developing, developing. And I'll talk more about that later on. But this is the bigger shift there that the accountant used to spend a lot of time in making the corrective entries in the finance. But now it is more focusing on analyzing the finance more. Okay. So I, I, I was curious, Vineet, to be honest, why technology is, is, is impacting finance like no tomorrow as we speak now. Is it because the finance, they have the sort of the data of the entire transaction recording as an overall? Is it because the behaviors of the finance in the back old days to be the gatekeeper, uh, uh, respecting the process, uh, very rigid to any new thing as much as we can to ensure that we have controls. Is it because of the shift on the mindset between controllership or partnership, uh, between pure accounting or commercial finance, between value protector and value creator? Why, what, if you highlight, what are the key drivers behind the overall finance change due to technology changes at the same time? Yeah, I mean, you know, as I said, finance earlier considered as a silo, right? Like mm -hmm. they are doing the accounting and just a gatekeeper of things like all the transactions, all the liquidity of the company are in the books and they are maintained easily. So because of that technology, that silo has broken down. Now they are becoming a partner to the business. As the technology, you know, advanced more, there is very less time they're spending on putting the entries together. And now they have a reports, right? Automations in the reports. And you can say the smaller softwares are there, but the larger softwares takes care of all consolidations, right? There is no manual things are involved. So it becomes more interesting for the finance to look at the numbers and see how the trends are going in. And that's why they can communicate not only to the CFO now, they are partnering to other departments to making them, helping them out. Okay, what should be your campaign budgets? What the things can be better for you? You know, sometimes weather forecasting, right? So they help the marketing team. Okay, this could be not the right time to do the stuff, you know? 
So those kind of things are very advancing and makes finance so much interesting right now because all those manual things are there are you know advancing and we are going to the automations and all those kind of consolidations and uh, re- those kind of things are go- gone you know all these are automated so it makes more interesting for the finance person to analyze the data and predict the future easily so before we go to the dna aspect and how it merges with the finance uh we had a discussion about the months in the closing activity especially for non-finance audience yeah where in a small companies and big companies and in even medium companies as well the finance team stay in the months in the closing for it depends on the automation process between two three days sometimes four days and sometimes more yeah and once they are closing the books then you have the forecast process as a rolling forecast we have another few days as well mm-hmm. crush the numbers and from a business from a non-finance point of view we see this super good team in a closed room staying for the first few days of the months only closing and forecast yeah. the time and the minute we came out of the room with the first question when we don't have the right data granality and dashboards and technology to evolve and get the insights and be more uh, perspective uh, data the first question we receive, we need a few days to get back to you, you know, whether in the forecast or on an actual. Then what, what exactly you used to do before in the closing and forecast? So from a, a non-finance background, before automation, can you just share some light? What finance yeah. used to do in these few days of the closing and forecast? Yeah, this is a very good question, Dada. And I would say not before the automation is still, the life of the accountant is like a normal curve. You know, it's just like goes like this. And the top of the days of the normal curve is minus five means 25th of the month, you know, maybe 26 based on the business day to the fifth of the next month. So these 10 days, you know, are the main and peak of the finance. Some, you won't believe some of the organizations, people devote 18 hours, 19 hours, you know, some, sometimes like humongous. And because of those lines and it which makes a very tough life out there. And in from their family side also, you know, they know that, okay, Whenever they speak to their family, okay, my month close is there. So they understand month close means, you know, <laughs> this person is going to, you know, stay late in the night. So those, as a, for the non-finance people, you, we call it as a month close where, you know, the cycle goes up from 26, 27, 28, and then goes to the peak in the first and second, and then goes a little bit down. You so know, it doesn't mean, this person is gonna, you know, stay. so it, it doesn't mean that, you know, that finance, the load of the finance is lower after fifth means that from the minus five to the plus five of the year month, it's the highest. It goes beyond the normal hours. And now the question comes in why they are spending so much time out there. Hmm. So as I said, finance is the main person who manage the liquidity of the finances of the company. And in order to predict the picture to the management, they have to make sure that all the expenses in a month, which has incurred in the month, are accounted in the, that month itself. So that's why they want to put as much as possible all the entries, all the transactions, all the input providers to that period of time. That's why it takes time. Now the question comes in, is it always be the life of the finance like this? But no, this is not there. There the piece of transformation comes in how we can make that normal curve easier so that there is a less burden on that. We need to find out the dependencies, why we are putting so much time. Is it just because of the entries? No, it's, it's because of our dependencies in finance is with other people who are not sending the information correct time or they are taking the information, you know, holding the information back till the time, you know, it becomes a <laughs> real necessity. So those kind of things are analyzed, Shredda, in the transformation process where we, you analyze each day how you are doing and how you can minimize the burden on the finance on that by resequencing the activities in a way that the normal curve doesn't go like this. It became stable like, you know, which is much reasonable like the normal other departments. And that's one unlock uh, space and wisdom and analytical brain to support the non-finance people because again, from 25 till fifth of the month, this peak. If you have 40 or 30 percent education for the business, there is a sales and operation and service happening at that time. That the word will not stop from 25th to 10. 
during this period. There is business ongoing and requires support on a daily basis as well. So that's how we can even re-inject the effort that we save from the automation into the business. Now, yeah. if you go to the next subject, which is related to the DNA, uh, you, you see the merge, the emerging uh, dynamics or movement between even from role titles or job requirement, between finance analyst, uh, finance analyst and DNA resource, where you can see a finance finance analyst, one of the job description is required the pure DNA data and analytics uh, uh, requirement. How do you see DNA play a, a, a bigger role into finance in the modern world as we speak now? Yeah, the DNA uh, data analytics, basically. So those are two together. They cannot be separate at all. The data is coming from finance and analytics is leveling top of that. I would say the role for the finance and data analytics have merged now together. Finance is not just not like a producing the reports. It is also producing the analysis for the reports. So analytics is now a part of the finance. And how they're integrating together is that when they work together as a collaborative approach and in a way that how to make a sense of the data in a way that is more readable to the management out there. So it's not like a silo anymore. The finance and data analytics are very collaborative approach. They work on the common data points which are beneficial to the stakeholders. So it, it's like now one of the skills which is required in the finance is the data analytics also. You have to have a visualization capabilities of your data and learn more and more how you can present the data in a way that it is more insightful to the management or your customers. And automation is playing so much good role, Reda, in that, that you are not spending so, so much time in just accounting of the things. You are using your time in visualizing the picture to the management so that they, they can make a wise decisions on the future course of actions. And now your customers are also expanding. It's not like just like a CFO. CFO is owning the finance department, but your customers are now you know, HR department, facilities department, other departments. They are relying on your inputs now, how they are doing, whether they are in the under budget, over budget, how, how you're progressing. And technology and data analytics helping a lot in that. And so now, as I said, the data analytics and finance are not a silo. These are common things. A person is expected to have finance and the data analytics knowledge together. OK. Uh, I agree with you, Vineet. Now, if, if we touch base on the technology aspect itself, since we're discussing uh, DNA as we speak now, if I have a catalog of technology uh, on the market, and you can see the market is very competitive, and fill of so many technology and giving your background as well within your entity or your or your own experience. If you're going to get give a checklist to the CEOs on what technology you should pick uh, and what problem to solve first when it comes to the finance, mm -hmm. uh, can, can you share some light on that? Well, absolutely. You know, one of the major things I have seen, you know, in the maximum area is a month close activities. As I said, the normal curve was not streamlined in the in the finance department and that is the area of the first area the finance should be focusing on first of all you know think about how you are making a checklist of the things which you are doing are you in excel move forward you know there are so many softwares are there that which can help you in managing the task list those task clicks are not just a listing of the activities and the days it will show you who is the input provider who who you have to send the information the analytics towards it and later on, at the month end, you can analyze who, who, which person has not sent the details in the right time, right? Mm. So those kind of things help you in making the things move forward. There are so many softwares out there, you know, which can help, you know, to to automate that manual checking of the task and you know making sure it is progressing well. And I would say that not only that, they those softwares have approval you know, capabilities also. Once the task is done, it is getting approved by the manager also. So they have a workflows. Mm. And this is the best thing that those software are not very high. I just give an example of the high, you know, black line software is there, you know, they, they manage the task, etc. There are many other softwares are there. SAP, they have, have their own, you know, tasks. Oracle have. So it depends upon the size of the company, you know, what uh, what level of investment they must wants to make. Right. 
So there are so many softwares are available who can help you in rationalizing this month close activity. So this is the biggest task, which you can you know straightforward knock that down and move forward for the automation journey. And uh, and one thing you know, Reda, I have analyzed that uh, since the, I said the finance is after fifth, you know they become relaxed, right? Finance team, okay, our month is closed now. Take you know normal things, but they don't take time to understand what went wrong last month, how this can be improved. So the post pre-close calls, you know, with the stakeholders that these are the expectations during the month close. If it is a quarter close, there are certain things has to be done, etc. So pre-close calls are very helpful. And as well as once you are done with the close, sit with the team and use those softwares to analyze the post close also so that the next month you you are just not doing the same thing and you are making the stakeholders aware about the things which you know happened in the past and can help you out in the future so you know an adoption of those softwares which i mentioned you know is very easy and especially the payback of those softwares like sap and oracle are for the very large organizations and it takes time a bit but some of the softwares have a payback of six months you know three months you recoup all the costs which you are spending and think about the life after those would be so well. So Absolutely. it's just a matter of understanding what your real situation is and how much a benefit a software can provide uh, for, for taking your journey ahead. So b before we go to the, the the limitation that we have, I just want to highlight one thing when it comes to the uh, landing technology, uh, the change management program play a bigger role in that where you need the people mindset and buy-in yeah. from everyone around the organization to land. Uh, given your experience within your own finance in terms of transforming the finance at your end, or yeah. even your ultimate customers uh, that you serve as well um, uh, in terms of transforming their finance function as well. How, yeah. how, how we can tackle the challenge of the uh, change resistance in the organization for anything new that we need to implement? Yeah, I mean, first of all, awareness, Reda. I would say whenever you are taking an initiative, make it aware about to the other people. And mm -hmm. second thing I would say the collaborations, you know, it's not that just like you are making the things and you are implementing the things to the other department. You need to be, be a collaborative approach with them. Just for an example, I'm telling you, you found out, for example, you are not up to date on your policies or your policies are, you know, for the finance or for example, fixed assets accounts or reporting policy is done five years ago. For example, you are not revisiting those policies. Rather than making the changes, involve your stakeholders together in a way that they are aware about how the you know how the changes are happening and what the other are the, those changes are making sense to overall organizations also or not. So basically, I would say that whenever you are doing any change, there would be a very smooth dissemination of information to the other mm -hmm. teams so that they understand in advance what the change is coming. And they are make aware about that. They are, their inputs are also taken care of in the change. So that's the mm. best way I would say that to do this. This not only apply to the policy, but also, for example, you are changing some invoice structuring for in companies, right? When you are adding vendors to the invoices, right? So mm. it may be possible, like some companies, some entity of a company, you know, same company, you know, have a different way of because of the legal regulations, they don't want to predict provide this kind of information in invoices. So those kind of all things should be coming in advance before you know final implementation of the things. So I would say collaborations plays a big role in the change management and making them aware in advance and making them a part of the process. So this helps a lot. No, I agree. The minute you get the uh, you get their input and consider this input, they will be part of the change and they will own the change itself. I've never I've never seen a top down change implemented successfully as a top down. It's a mandate you have to land it this way, especially with big changes as well, not a small change. Now, let's let's draw a scenario and let's make it a, a real scenario we need, not a theoretical one, okay? Yeah. Every CFO or a finance leader, they are stretched as we speak now, giving all the VUCA environment and global changes as you can see now in the economy. They barely pushing on the minimum requirement in some cases they need, they need to land. And on top of that, you're asking that this Finance lead, they need to spare some resource, time, effort, and budget for transformation and making the finance ready for the future. How we can strike the balance between uh, 
short term goals requirement uh, demanding business and at the same time spare the right balance for the future i'm absolutely agreeing with how you are coming from you know finance is all about the deadlines and they have to meet the deadlines so this is deadlines you know you, you can say that <laughs> um plays their roles um what they have to do when they have to do and all so that's why i was saying that you know tech Im importance of technology is very important and finance has to be an agile in adopting those technology they should hear what the technology can help it's always a you know resistance to change you know it is always difficult to do the things and finance is mostly the routine kind of things happens every month close is a pressurous month close same kind of general entries you are processing same kind of reports you are doing it so finance people are tend to be you know little bit stricter in their roles because they are driven by the deadlines but if they keep their mindset open for a new learnings always inviting the new companies what their products are how they can help you know and how how the things can be better with, with the use of pro their product maybe you know once one meeting a month you know or one meeting meeting a quarter with a new vendor understand the new product and how this helped in other departments so those kind of open mindset helps a lot reda i would say that otherwise this deadline driven thing becomes a monotonous and uh, you know adoption of technology will make the life simpler in a way that they need to want to do the routine kind of things the automation helps on those kind of things and they can focus more on how they can use best of the technology and basically enjoy the the technology which is coming in so so that way you know i i would say that uh, their burden will be reduced and uh, the responsibility they will, they will love to share those things basically reda it's not like that they have to do, do it they have to give to other departments but they will love to sh share because their point of view will be taken care of in it department will take care of their point of view because they cannot purchase right now because of these reasons and you know and they can give the valid point also that they can purchase at this time because of this situation mm. you know so so they that's why you know the partnership always is uh, invited i think as well we need uh, communication is play a bigger role here even for the business leaders just to be aware that uh, we're going to spare some uh, time and resources for a future uh, agility of the finance and the finance to add more value to the organization uh, i've seen the business understanding this situation and the yeah. they are willing to invest as well and be Investing. understanding mm -hmm. the situation uh, rather than being in silos and be under the pressure that you're trying to cater for all the business requirement at the same time doing the transformation uh, at the same time so uh, i see what you're saying but communication play a bigger role as well uh, communication with the finance team and communication with the wider audience of the business as well and setting expectation that this is yeah. what we're going through and we should set the right expectation at the beginning uh, to make sure that you have the right mindset and once the other teams also see right uh, that finance is providing the value you know to them with the more insights which they is not possible for them they always welcome those kind of things and when finance team sees that okay their decisions or their support is helping the other organizations so main you know it becomes a more collaborative approach to produce the things together and it's not like a comes like a pressure because you have to do it because you are providing the insights and how valuable you are and when a person feels valuable he he provides more you know so the minute you see when the person feel that he or she is valuable this yes. person will go and excel more and deliver more uh, that is a key yeah. that's that's the important point now I remember the job requirement like uh, 15 years ago and what kind of uh, skill set that we need for uh, a finance team uh, and giving as well the Gen Z and the evolving of the generations. Uh, you can see the white hair. I'm not part of the Gen Z anymore. <laughs> but in that sense, what kind of skill set if you're recruiting your team, uh, we need as we speak now. Yeah. Uh, or giving an advice to one of your partner or customers for yeah. a finance recruitment what will be your uh, key advice uh, for that person yeah. and what should he or she look into the skill set in the market as well i would say you know right uh, the first thing if you are hiring an expert you know if a person is considered an expert you can never be an expert in this today's environment 
you mm. cannot find that cert because the technology is advancing so fast right so first thing i would say the attitude of person for the new learnings that mm. is a must key things because it may happen you know a year of xyz experience may not be you know provide the equal value to the next year so this learning attitude is must that a person i would look for and second thing i would say that one is a common always in finance is excel right even though you are doing the good softwares good analytics and all but eventually for the ad hoc things you know excel is very flexible and always is welcomed and i am very good you know towards the automations i am always supporting of that that as much as when you are doing the things couple of times in a week or a month look for automations but when it comes to the ad hoc things which finance get a lot sometimes give me this simulations give me this analysis what happens what if analysis and all so excel skills i would say in addition to the software skills you should be very good at advanced excel second thing i would say that you know you should be able to understand how to extract data from the system so just for an example uh, sap is there and oracle is there you should be knowing about the sql language for example right mm. the sql language helps you to extract the right information so that you can do the analytics on the top of that so that is also very helpful in 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 the you know skill set that you should be having a dot data extractions capabilities uh, that thing no coding required it's not expected that finance should know but at least they should be understanding how to query or at least how to edit the query mm. so that they can get the right information and the third skill i would say the data visualization right up that is becoming so much important right now so if you give the report to someone you know it doesn't make much sense but if you visualize the data in a way that it compares the things in a way that it is more readable that where my spikes are why my spikes are coming with the drilling down functionality is there or not those kind of visualization capabilities are very important different types of graphs different type of possibility so so many tools are there they have inbuilt graphical capabilities but still you know you should be understand what you want to visualize understand the data and think about how it can make more sense though those kind of capabilities are kind of skill set will always be there in finance mm -hmm. the visualization capabilities and lastly i would say that the with the advent of the ai is coming you should keep learning about the artificial intelligence of the things it is a game changer in that i am seeing the cases where ai is producing the forecast radar right and just for an example uh, you know normally how we do pre forecasting it is like take this number as a baseline add to the certain numbers add some assumptions and produce the forecast but this ai is taking care of all those things but also using the intelligence in reading the stuff for example payroll right and payroll this ai takes care of what time the bonuses should come you know when when it's coming in the past from the last two years for example and it products predicts the bonus components the you know other details behind it by reading the headings right it is not like just you know take the trends how it is forecasting ai is understanding the data behind mm -hmm. it and reading the you know specific heads and then producing the forecast so it's helping a lot and it's going to be the future also you know we will having a lot of softwares which are adding this ai capabilities into that so it will make a life very easier but we should understand also how it is working and what the rules behind it and how i can make a best use of those ai related things in finance so this kind of four things or five things you know i would say kind of must thing for for the finance person right now <laughs> I think that's a holistic view, uh, not only for the new joiner, for even existing team as we speak now, uh, in finance and non-finance. I think it's the skill set that you shared that is like required for all job titles as we speak now across mm -hmm. all. If I repeat the question for the marketing jo new joiner, procurement, supply chain, um, yes. HR, I think it, it is it is required across all the board, the basic requirement of AI, dashboard, visualization, storytelling, yeah. uh, understanding yes. how to fetch the data from different data source, uh, right. understanding the language. So I think it is required everywhere now, uh, we need. And yep. uh, the AI, it's a game changer. Uh, I'm not sure you heard the news a few days back of the OpenAI press release <laughs> on customized AI. You can have multiple 
thousands of AI customized to you in your personality. Yeah. You can create your own AI for your forecast, for EB, for AR. And I believe that yeah. it's like a game changer uh, again. And you see that the sequence we discovered the no discovered we we got the new uh, chat GBT a few months back and now we have a new release of chat GBTs with an S. <laughs> and minutes. exactly in a few months, I'm I'm sure in a few days and a few months as well sooner than before we're gonna see more involvement and more ideas based on that. So the base yes. is increasing uh, big time as well, and we have to evolve. We have no other option except to evolve no other and, uh, and adapt. Exactly, that's the only option we have. Lifelong learner, always, you know. There's no expertise right now, but lifelong learner, learn the new things, how you it can make your life easier. Exactly. So, uh, Vinit, thank you very much. I think, uh, first of all, I need to thank you for the being so patient and uh, to practice with me how we can set up the live, uh, live stream. You can see uh, the comments that the video and audio looks, looks good uh, after many attempts of testing, me and you. And... Uh, being the first guest virtual as well in finance for non-finance so i really appreciate that you accepted the invite and we're gonna make sure that to connect with you later whenever you're uh, passing by the studio I'll, it will be great to have a face-to-face -face interview with you as well in the studio so thank you so so much Vinit, for that and i really enjoyed the discussion with you no no absolutely right and one thing i would say you know one thing common between you and me is a passion for finance exactly. you know the people should understand so that's the main reason for coming you know, that I want to contribute to your passion and my passion together and can benefit somehow to the other teams, other people who are looking for the finance team is just not like a, you know, uh, the game changer in the industry. So think about from those perspective, the doctors, right? Requires 20, 27, 28 years, but in the finance, you are good to go by 21, right? You know, get the graduations, get the CPA and you are good to go and get the career out at, out there through so, it. I mean, so predictable in finance. Thank you so much, Vinita. And uh, looking forward for the next time uh, and enjoy your day. Yeah, same to you. Thank you. Thank you, Reda, for having me.